Unemployment is on the rise and budgets are tight, but many Americans are choosing to go back to college in an effort to change careers or to improve their chances in this competitive job market. And Montgomery College, like many community colleges across the country, is providing a quality, low-cost option for students. Coming up on Campus Conversations, a look at options for students at Montgomery College. Welcome to Campus Conversations. I'm Fritzi Bodenheimer. And I'm Marcus Rosano. With thousands of jobs lost each week and many workers worried about losing jobs, a college education is important in order to be competitive in the job market. During these difficult economic times, many community colleges across the country are seeing an increase in the number of adults or non-traditional age students returning to the classroom. And Montgomery College is no exception. With reasonable tuition rates and small classes, many county residents are back on campus trying to enhance their skills so they can stand out in the crowd or in a stack of resumes. With us now to discuss this trend and the options available to students are the College Registrar, Rochelle Hopkins, and Melissa Gregory, the College Director of Student Financial Aid. Welcome to you both. Talk a little bit about, Rochelle, some of the things you're starting to see in the registrar's office, any trends uh, that might be a result of this economy. Okay. Uh, we're seeing a lot of reverse transfer students, students that have already attended a four-year institution. Some already have their bachelor's degrees, and some already have their master's degrees. And they're coming back to change careers, to get more skills? Yes, um, sometimes a combination of both, um, to get more skills, some that are unemployed, um, some that are underemployed. And if someone is underemployed, how do they pay to take classes at college? <laughs> Well, one of the myths is that adult students or returning students can't receive all the same financial aid that a traditional age student can, and of course they can. They can receive Pell Grants, they can receive student loans, it's all the same. Um, one thing that returning students have to think about, if you've been working and you do your free application for federal student aid, which is the first step no matter what school you go to, it's going to be based on last year's income information. So those students have to know they have to come to the financial aid office and go, hey, I'm not making that amount of money anymore. My income is lower. And then we're able to reprocess the application and use that lower income. And we're definitely seeing an increase in the number of students who request that kind of reprocessing. Talk a little bit about the student that comes and their parents make a little bit too much money mm -hmm. to qualify for the, uh, the m amounts of financial aid. What can you tell those students? Not to get discouraged, I guess. No, and it's, it's very different because everyone thinks financial aid, Pell Grant. Well, I don't have a low enough income for the Pell Grant. And, and what briefly is a Pell Grant? Pell Grant is the largest federal grant program in the United States. Um, it's pretty much for families. A uh, family of four with one child in college wouldn't make an, an income of over $45,000 a year and the maximum Pell Grant next year is going up to $5,350 for the academic year. So it's a really good deal for a community college student. It's going to cover tuition fees, books, um, but not everyone qualifies for that. That's okay. There are other kinds of grants and scholarships. Montgomery College offers very generous, generous institutional uh, grant funds. We also have scholarship money for students that show need but don't get Pell Grants. And then we also do participate in the student loan programs. We don't encourage loans, but they are available if that's a resource students need to pay for their education. And what about maybe taking just a course here and there, maybe through continuing education? Are we seeing an increase in that? And are there opportunities for that for maybe uh, someone who's working part time but wants to make a change? Absolutely. Um, Nine credit courses are good for those who just want something really quick to beef up their skills. Um, and they are available at convenient locations, at convenient times for those that do have to work. Um, also, our credit um, courses are offered in the evenings, on the weekends, to accommodate the schedule of those persons that do have to work. That's interesting. What are some more of the selling points that you're, you guys are making for Montgomery College as the alternative to a four-year school, which obviously it's economy and <laughs> uh, um, just some of the things that you're telling students uh, that are coming here? Okay. When we talk about the economy, the main thing that we are focused on is most people's money. Mm -hmm. um, it's affordable. You know, our in-county tuition rates here are $99 per credit hour. That is certainly an attraction that's um, a 
parents are attracted to that amount and students are attracted to that amount. Distance learning um, courses, you don't even have to leave the comforts of your home to complete courses. That's an attraction also. I'm curious about, uh, you mentioned earlier there's some scholarships, and I always heard if you look hard enough, there'll be a scholarship to fit you. Is that true for adult learners as well? Yes, it is, and all of our Montgomery College Foundation scholarships are available to both traditional age and non-traditional age students, so they have to complete the foundation scholarship application. It is on MC's website um, and turn that in. As a matter of fact, our deadline, our priority deadline for scholarship applications is coming up. Um, and we have a variety of scholarships based on your major, your grades, lots of different circumstances. So we do encourage students to apply that way. Can you talk a little bit about some of the tips you might give to students who are going to be applying for financial aid? I know there's a lot of dates. I know that you're probably going to tell us uh, to get it in there early. Do it now. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, August is really hard if you suddenly go, you know, I don't have money to pay my bill. and. Mm -hmm wow, it's due in a week. Um, yes, we can handle that. We can do a last minute application and try to get you into classes and even perhaps advance you book money, but it's going to put a lot more stress on you if you wait till the last minute. We always tell students very early in the year, even if you're not sure you're going to go to school, you're still on the fence, do the application anyway. It doesn't cost you anything. So that's one more step that you've taken care of. You're one step closer to having the financial aid available. So that's really important. And also, if your income has changed, be sure to come in and talk to us about what we might be able to do to process your application a different way. And is it true that if you are not a dependent, that is, if you're not depending on mom and dad, or if you're an older student returning to the classroom, that might actually work in your favor? It really depends. Um, the federal government requires most students up to the age of 24 to provide their parents income information on their financial aid application. Doesn't matter if you live with your parents, doesn't matter if they're supporting you, if you're under 24, you're not married, and a lot of other uh, criteria, you're going to have to provide your parents information. So, and there are exceptions, and we do work with those exceptions on a case-by-case -case basis, so it's really gonna depend on the individual student situation. Mm, that's interesting. Rochelle, you had mentioned uh, before about career retooling, and that's taking non-credit courses. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yes. Um, I said earlier, a lot of our students are reverse transfer students, so they already have a bachelor's right. degree or a master's degree in a certain field, but through like our non-credit course offerings, they can just pick up some courses to give them new skills for perhaps a new career path. And what about the distance learning? I'm wondering if you've seen, uh, I don't know, if you keep numbers on this, but any increase in that since the economy has sort of gone sour? Because it seems like such a good option. You could do it on the weekends or at night or on your own mm -hmm. time. It's more convenient. Yeah. It has been an increase um, in our course offerings through distance learning. And we also have some blended courses where some of the coursework is done in person, face to face, and then a portion of the coursework is done um, out of the classroom setting. That's great. And what are some of the, you had asked about tips, but I'm curious about what are some of the mistakes people make in terms of either getting registered or filling out their financial aid forms? Now's your chance to say, you know, You're get it right. right, right. Now. <laughs> Don't wait till the last minute to uh, register. It's a, <laughs> it's a theme. <laughs> well, a lot of the classes that students want at the yes. times they want will be gone. Mm -hmm. And so you shouldn't wait till the last minute. And if you're waiting because I don't have my financial aid in place yet. Well, you don't have to wait to register mm -hmm. until you receive a financial aid award letter. We tell students at our high school workshops, you don't have to wait to apply for financial aid to be admitted to a particular school. You can always go ahead and do that. But you want to, especially at Montgomery College, get those classes and those times locked in. Mm -hmm. The bills due later. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yes. we have time to take care of that as long as you don't wait till the last minute. And I wanted to ask you, you had mentioned it earlier too about loans, even though people don't want to have that debt, there are loans available? There are loans available. We participate in the federal loan programs. Um, all of the information, of course, is on our webpage about the maximums and what you can receive. Uh, it's not the preferred choice for Montgomery College students, so we're a very large school, but we do comparatively a low loan volume for a school our size. 
we do expect we'll see increases in that next year simply because people need money from different sources. And there are loans for students, and there are also loans that parents can borrow on behalf of their kids to help pay for their education. So it all starts with the FAFSA, though, even though it's a loan. And st some students think, well, it's a loan, it's not financial aid. It is financial aid, and you do have to do the application for federal student aid to get that started. We'll put you through an entrance interview where you'll come in and you'll meet with someone. We'll tell you all the terms and conditions of the loan, what you're getting yourself into, what you're signing on for. So you'll be walked through every step of the way, which I think is another advantage of Montgomery College. You get more hands-on help with all those kinds of things that students who do reverse transfer say, mm -hmm. the four-year school didn't do this, right, right. and they don't. <laughs> and that's all, there's a payment plan option that's available too. If you don't want to um, do the student loan or you don't are not eligible for financial aid, we can put you on a payment plan. Very good. Thank you for helping us today understand these forms and registration a little bit more. Thank right, you. Both. Thank you. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll talk about two Montgomery College programs designed specifically for adults coming back to college. Stay tuned. You're watching Campus Conversations. I'm visually impaired. I'm legally blind. Even though I can commute, it's still a, you know, a little bit of a challenge. It was easier to, to use the distance learning. I'm encouraged. I have so many more options available to me now that I wouldn't have been able to, you know, wouldn't have had because I wouldn't have been able to get out to the campus. Now I have many options available to me that were not available before. Welcome back. With us now are Amanda McIntosh from the Germantown Options for Adult Learners or Goal Program and Wilmar Emanuel from the Office of Adult Services based on Montgomery College's Brockville campus. Uh, first, let's start with Amanda. Tell us a little bit about the Goal Program and maybe some of the challenges that adults are seeing when they have to come back uh, to college. The Goal Program is a student support program. A lot of students think that it's an academic program or something that they register for, but it's actually just a support program. A lot of students are returning after 10 or 20 years out of the classroom, and so they come back and they find the processes really difficult to navigate. So our office is in place to kind of ease the transition, to have one place where they can go to ask questions or to find all the resources that they need to kind of get settled in. Then we offer programming throughout the time that they're on the campus. Um, we offer workshops and seminars on things like financial aid for adult students, other kind of um, technology, things like that, things that they may not be used to or things that they may have some questions about so that they can come and get some answers that are specific to the adult population. And Wamara, you run a similar program, but on the Rockville campus. Tell us a little bit about that. Sure. Um, we, our program does serve mostly um, the Rockville campus population. Um, and we really see our job as um, advocating on behalf of adult students, empowering them so that they can actually complete um, their degree, and providing the support that Amanda talked about before. Um, because a lot of times they're really looking for a place to vent and talk about what's happening, but also a one-stop shop to get whatever resources they may need. So very similar also to Goal, we offer um, programs and workshops uh, that talk about um, academic skills, math anxiety, um, the whole p navigating the process of choosing a major and all of that. What's what are the hot careers right now? And we've co collaborated on doing a transfer program because a lot of times they're ready, they've done everything here, but what's the next step and how do we do the next step? So our office does a little of all of that. Oh, As Amanda was saying, these are students who may have not been in the classroom for 10 or 20 years and that can be somewhat daunting. That's right, that alone is intimidating. So it's really nice for them to have a place where they can come to and get those kind of questions answered. Um, also talk about um, resources, everything from childcare to um, you know, talking about who's the best professor <laughs> or what time to take a <laughs> class. Or uh, So we really try to provide all of that under one, one umbrella. I'm wondering, you said childcare. I'm sure uh, adult students have a whole 
range of issues that might not be the same for an 18 or 19 year old, a traditional mm -hmm. student. Besides childcare, what are some of the issues that they have to deal with while taking classes? Well, I think like time, <laughs> you know, <laughs> because time is huge. Um, balancing family, work, a lot of them are parents, grandparents, um, taking care of siblings. And it's really difficult to manage all of that on top of their job that they also have. And now they're taking classes. And it's, that's why we talk a little bit about support, because a lot of times it's just a place to talk and to vent about what's happening. But they do have to juggle all of that. And the financial part of it um, also, because they may or may not get financial aid um, or their employer is paying for the credit, but they have a certain great expectation that they need to oh get in order to be able to get that money refunded back to them. So they have the pressure that I have to earn this B or I have to earn this A in the midst of everything else um, that I'm doing. So, you know, time is, is hard, money, <laughs> and balancing, you know, their life issues as well. It's a lot to balance. Yeah. And how are these students, well, how do they find you and how are you finding these students to offer them the help? We have a website on the home page of the Montgomery College website. There's a link that says adult learners. And then on the left hand side, you can click for your campus. So that links to our individual website. So you can find information about the goal program or the Office of Adult Student Services that way. Um, I'm located in the SA building on the Germantown campus in room 172. And I'm in the Campus Center building in Rockville in room 17. I wondered, um, students who are just coming back to campus for the first time, maybe in a long time, they have all these challenges, but they also have the benefit of experience. Is there any way that they can use that towards credit or some way to put that experience into play on campus? We do actually. We have a prior um, credit for prior learning program, and that actually allows them to put several pieces together. Could be what they've been doing in the workforce. Um, could be previous college credit. Uh, it could also be placement testing. So they take um, exams in certain content areas, and if they score high enough, then they've earned that credit. Um, the life experience in terms of work. There, we offer, first they have to attend the seminar that will just give them an idea of what this entails and if they even qualify for it. Because a lot of times it's not just, I've worked in this office for eight years, <laughs> therefore <laughs> let me get credit for it. So we explain to them what the process is, the portfolio that they have to put together. And the portfolio is actually quite a bit of work because they need to work with faculty. They really need to show that they have an understanding of the course that they're trying to get credit for. Um, and so once they've gone through the seminar, they've done a, a register for this course and the course helps them put together the portfolio that they need to get the number of credits and so, so a student can actually earn quite a number of credits using these three um, resources so that they can use all of their prior experience to earn college credits. Um, in the brief time we have left if someone's out there watching they're thinking about coming back to school what quick tips could you give them about getting ready to come back? I would say Definitely stopping by to talk with one of us. Um, we can provide a lot of resources, a lot of things they don't have to spend time looking for. Mm -hmm. They can come to us and they can find the answers in one place. Also, to try not to be as nervous as they usually are. They tend to think that they're the only adult students out there. That's not true. That's not true at all. Adult students are the fastest growing population in higher education. So there are a lot of adult students and um, so they're not alone and they do have a lot to offer to the traditional age students in the classroom. Thanks for offering us all of your good information today. Thank you Thank very you. much. Thank you. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll hear firsthand how Montgomery College is helping students succeed. Stay tuned. You're watching Campus Conversations. opportunities in networking and technology. It doesn't matter if you're a woman, if you're a man, what culture you're from, it's, it's more of the value that you bring to the table.
Welcome back. With us now are Carlo Ferrugia, who just graduated from Montgomery College, and his wife, Tammy Ferrugia, who is currently a student. Welcome to you both. Thanks for being here. Uh, let's talk a little bit about how you got to Montgomery College. You're from Michigan, and you had a business, and things happen, the economy is, is getting to a lot of people, and well, you're here. Tell us a little bit about that. Absolutely. We, um, we, had, we had a substantially sized business um, in Michigan. Um, we had about 15 employees. Mm -hmm. And um, when the economy began to disintegrate around us, we were looking for some opportunities in place where um, there's, there's still some um, uh, opportunity for work and different things. So we, um, we were able to locate uh, a job opportunity here in Maryland, and we moved our whole family, wife, and uh, we have two young children. And that must have been a, a pretty big change in and of itself, let alone coming back to school. Absolutely. Uh, when I first got here, I, I identified the need that education was, was a very important component of our life. So um, I started to take classes very slowly, um, online classes here at Montgomery. And then uh, my wife, she kind of recognized that it was going to be an important thing too. So she um, started to take classes here about uh, six, eight months ago. And tell us a little bit about what you're both studying. I'm um, studying photography um, and going to go on to pursue my associates in photography and possibly go on to do graphic design. Wow. And, and I'm enrolled in the uh, paralegal program. I have a, or I was enrolled in the paralegal program. I got my certificate here and then uh, moved forward to my AA, which I've now moved on to um, University of Maryland, University College. Wow. Let's go back to when you came to the conclusion that this is the step that you were going to have to take to leave you know, Michigan, to you know, leave your business, if you would. Um, you have a family, you have children. Uh, just talk a little bit about what that feels like as the family, sitting down and say, this is a step that we're going to have to take, because there's a lot of people right now that are going through it at the same time, and you guys are unique because you're students now as well. Just talk a little bit about that process. It was very difficult at first um, to leave our whole family and friends behind. We had grown up and lived there our whole lives. Mm -hmm. um, but it was something that we talked about and we knew that we had to take the step forward and basically do whatever it would take um, to survive uh, and to make sure that we could take care of our, our daughters the best that we could. Um, the first year was, you know, the hardest. Um, and now that we've been here for almost two years, I can honestly say it would be hard to go back to Michigan. I, I actually really enjoy it here. And uh, Montgomery County is, um, Montgomery College is actually one of the major reasons that I'm very comfortable now and, and feel Maryland is home now. Neither one of you had been in school for a while. Uh, what was it like coming back and being a student again after running your own business and being the boss? <laughs> I could say that, um, you know, I, I took it real slow at first. It wasn't even something I was sure I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And I started with the, um, on, some online classes, um, and I found them really rewarding. And they actually exceeded my expectations of what it was going to be like to go back to school. And then. Uh, I did about a semester or so of that, and then I moved on to taking some lecture classes, the standard traditional classes, um, which, which was fantastic too. One of the things is that uh, I achieved real good grades, and it really gave me a sense of accomplishment, and it helped boost uh, my self-esteem. Uh, self Phi Theta Kappa? Yep, got the Phi Theta Kappa. I've maintained a 4.0 average here, which yeah. was really surprising, because if you'd seen my grades back in 93, <laughs> the last time I went to school, <laughs> you'd be quite surprised. Wow. And what is it like to be parents and employees and students and how do you manage, for all the families out there thinking about doing this, how do you manage every just, single day? Oh, we always find a way. I mean, no matter what it is, if it's something you truly want to do, you, you find a way to make it work. And, uh, you know, that's, mm -hmm. Tams is really good with the kids and she takes excellent care of them and, and she was able to you know, do a little bit of daycare and work with the neighbors. They've helped us out for her school time. And the online thing also offers a great opportunity for that because you're able to actually study from home. And talk a little bit about how you found uh, Montgomery College. I mean, you, you came here, um, you know, did you, it has a reputation as one of the best community colleges in, in the country. And talk a little bit about how you found it and what you think of Montgomery College right now. We actually um, didn't know that when we first mm -hmm. applied and, and came into Montgomery College. Um, but after coming here, we can see why it has such a, a high, you know, standard. Yeah. Um, it's been great. It's been fantastic. The professors are wonderful. Um, they will help you with anything that you need. Um, as well as all the different divisions um, of student services. They've been very helpful. I, I love it here. It's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> I'm curious, you're both parents, as we mentioned. Um, what is it like maybe for your older daughter to see mom and dad going to school? Is that sort of inspiration or um, helping her study? I guess when you're that little, you don't quite have to study, but 
getting your homework done and that sort of thing. I think it's such a great example. I have a six-year-old. She just started kindergarten. Oh. <laughs> and um, actually, I think on my f last semester, the final day, I actually brought her to the class with me. Uh, oh. The professor was really cool. And I think that that's a really neat thing, that she sees that it's an important component of life. And, and I think growing up with that would be a, a real strong thing to, for her to helping her move forward. A future Montgomery College student, maybe. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> <Hopefully so. laughs> yeah. Well, should definitely go on to school. <laughs> where, where do you both see yourself now at, at, in this new new part of your life? Uh, where do you see yourself now in a couple of years? Uh, I, hopefully, I'll, uh, hopefully I'll have completed my bachelor's degree. Um, I've got a great start on it um, from the credits I've gotten here, and uh, you know I would like to. My, my goal is to go to law school yeah. and, and to wow. get a law degree. So that's where I want to be. How about for yourself? Um, and hopefully I'll be working in photography, which is something I absolutely love. So it's it's been a fantastic journey for me because I, in the end, I'll be do doing something I truly love to do. So that's important to me. So. Wow. Well, I wish you both lots of luck in your journey. You've already given us a lot of good lessons and other families who are going to try to make this work. Thank you so much. All right, good. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Much. Thank you very much. For more information about Montgomery College and the programs we've discussed today, please visit our website at montgomerycollege.edu. And as always, if you have comments about today's show or suggestions for future episodes, send an email to campus.conversations at montgomerycollege.edu. For all of us here at Campus Conversations, I'm Marcus Rosanna. And I'm Fritzi Bodenheimer. Thanks for watching.